I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name drop, but you name drop all the time, so it's fine. But um, It's okay. Listen, we're in show business. We know people. I know, but, but go ahead. I'm so going to drop the wand every time you say a name. Go oh ahead. Oh, my God. Anne Heche? No, she was oh. in this movie, though. Um, oh. No, uh, it was uh, Slash. There it is. Um, he was doing the Rob Zombie thing where he was, like, uh, making horror movies. And I played this. I, I, it's called Nothing Left to Fear. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make, um, but I played like the monster that like kills my whole family. Because for some reason, I think we've talked about this. I after can't Wizards, see you as a monster. I can't see you as a monster. I've got a dark side, baby. Um, <laughs> no, but like literally after Wizards, like the first four jobs I did after Wizards was all me like killing my whole family. I don't oh. know what that was. It, I guess Harper, Harper was so <laughs> joyful <laughs> that I just had to go completely the other direction. Like, we got to get Jen Stone. Harper looks like she can kill people. No, literally everything was like she's possessed by a demon, murders her whole family, or like whatever so my first four jobs were i was killing everybody but um after wizards um but so it was like this creature feature exorcism whatever but we shot in new orleans and we shot in this house oh yeah that, there's a lot of activity yeah. there oh and like i and i and i'm a weird kid so like i my I, I grew up my brother loves history so we would go to like like cemeteries and he'd love to see like the the time frames and see like the, find the oldest tombstone so i just like grew up like walking in cemeteries because i'm just a weirdo and so I would go to New Orleans and like walk through the cemeteries and everyone was like, don't do that. You're going to take something home with you. Yeah. Cause spirits sometimes can attach yeah, yeah, to yeah. you or to objects. And Zach stuff. knows all about that. Oh God. I love Zach. But so the experience that I had, so I started doing, um, like research. Cause like I do for every role of like demonic, whatever. Right. And then it got a little too much. So I was like, let me just put a pause on my research. I've done enough. I, I'm fine. Um, and we were in this old house and there was a wall that had all of these crosses on it and they took them all down, which I was like, that's your first, in the horror movie, that's the first thing you don't do is take all the crosses down. Um, but it was the scene I was supposed to like crawl up this wall. There's a sliding closet door and, uh, my makeup artist that was doing all the prosthetic makeup on me, um, they had drilled it into the floor cause they didn't want it to rattle for sound. Uh -huh. And the first thing that happened was in this corner, it fell on her. So for some reason, with even all these, even like though it was drilled into in, the ground, wow. and it was they drilled it in there, so it came off the thing and hit her in the head. She had to go to the hospital with a concussion. So we kept going because we only had the location for it's show business. You got to keep right. going. Like it was just very odd. So I I did this thing where like I started kind of going up the wall. And it was like an out of body experience where I was totally aware of everything that was happening to me in this corner, but I couldn't control anything that was happening. And then I like, and then my knees just like gave out. Like I went up this wall, I, I started doing these like weird things that I had not planned on doing, didn't feel like I was in control of doing. And then my body just like went limp. And I said to them, I was like, did you guys get this on camera? Like that was the weirdest thing. They were like, let's like look like we were shooting. We should have. Please say yes. No, the camera completely cut to black. Uh, completely cut out. And that happens to thing. everybody who doesn't know. I'm getting goosebumps right now. That's intense, Jen. It was it um, was weird. I asked my it, parents. It was in it was in uh, New Orleans, and I asked my parents. I was like, "Can you?" It was my first like location uh, shoot on my own, and I was like, "Can you please come down?" So I was like, "I'm a little freaked out." Basically, you got possessed while you were acting possessed. I don't know. Right? I've tried to like, especially like since like going to healthcare, I'm like trying to find like a medical reason of maybe I like vasovagal or like. What is something. vasovagal? It's, it's basically like if you stand up too fast or if like, uh, you get yeah. shocked or stress. Or, I'm vasovagal all the time. I well, it. yeah. Well, it's like Zeke and the show did that a lot. <laughs> oh, and he gets so excited and pass out. But that's what happens. Like if you get your blood drawn, you pass out. Or even right. if you take a shit too hard, you pass out. You know what I mean? That's like, not happened to me, anybody. But it's a so thing. You know. But that's what I'm saying. So like I try to like put like a, a logical reason behind it and I and I just, it doesn't add up. It that's was really creepy. Um, well, let's, we can move on to some questions, but yeah, I just yeah. Everyone's want everyone, like, I didn't realize this was a Ghost Adventures podcast. That you should watch Ghost Adventures. <laughs> it's an awesome show. It's Somewhere really Zach fun. Baggins is like, yeah. And Zach Baggins, if you're listening, I heart you, and I uh, am a huge fan. I love that the I heart, like you just say, I heart you all the time. Well, so Zach, are you, are you kidding well, no, but me? You say it about like you I say do a to little. Me, okay, I'm going to do like, a little okay, imitation really of Zach. Just tell Please me, do. just Please tell do. me anything about what's going so on. So this house, um, there's just unexplained noises, and the door closes randomly. So what you're saying is, <laughs> in this house, doors close randomly. Yeah, yeah, all the time. All the time. <laughs> He, he does. He, he likes to repeat. I, I'm, he likes I'm doing to this. I, I know uh, imitation is the biggest form of flattery. Yes. And I, 
He repeats everything. This is a really good love letter to Zach Baggins. I think uh, he's got it. I do. So mm, I'm I love this question. Um, Christina Morrison asked, she asked it to Harper, but she goes, it goes for any character. Okay. She goes, how hard was it to play Harper who is positive, optimistic, and happy on days you weren't feeling like her? Ah, that's a and good that's, question. But that's a good question for both of us because yeah. how often, like all the time, you have to play characters that are in a headspace that you don't wake up in or naturally in or go to or whatever. I was going through a fucking child custody battle. Yeah, the, and having you know. to be so jovial and yeah. happy. And I mean, I know. got served papers on set yeah. by my ex-wife. It was a bad day. Not fun. No. And, and I think I've said this before, but my girlfriend couldn't get on set. She was always stopped for well, some the, reason at the, the door. The serving people are very talented. <laughs> yes, the people who serve. What you have to do when you're feeling bad is just set that aside and do your job. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and what's interesting is, uh, um, you know, going through a divorce or having trouble with your kids or having a pet die or whatever it is. As an actor, you can utilize that. Yeah. You know, it's, I don't be- wanna... it's better to use it than to fight it. Howie Mandel did a talk show, and. I did not know that he was a germaphobe at that time. Yeah. And I think he, you know, he was the first time I ever went to network was to play Howie Mandel's daughter. Oh, really? Small world. Well, Here, he was, we should, we should. He, and there, there you go. go. We just dropped the wand, everybody, because every time you say a famous name, you drop it. Okay, so <laughs> I do a joke yeah. where I come out of the bathroom and I tuck some toilet paper in the back of my pants. Okay. And then you have like a oh, 10 ooh, foot chain. Not, not the move with Right? Not but I did that to oh, enter. Oh, God, no. And I, and I, you know, got a laugh and then I shook his hand no. and everything. Oh. And the reason I said this is because on that episode, yeah. he said, I heard you can cry on crew. Cry, cry on, on crew. cue. And I did on the show. I was very proud of myself. Aww. You know, I, I think it takes a lot of focus. Uh, to play when you're a, a positive, optimistic character like Harper on days when you especially, and I really, like, I'll be perfectly honest and not to be a Debbie Downer, but, like, I really struggle with depression. I do. Like, I, and and I struggled with it a lot during Wizards, actually. Um, and I, there were times where Harper was kind of an escape. Like, I think of acting a lot of times as a catharsis, and if you can find that focus and tap into that person, um it can be a catharsis and an escape from yes. sometimes what you're going through. And, and like I said, I had some, I had some dark days and, and, and some depression that I really struggled with during wizards and Harper was my reprieve. Yeah, almost. So, so was there uh it's intense. Um, like I said, I didn't mean to be Debbie Downer about it. But, but wait a minute, didn't Debbie Downer, didn't she play your mom? She, no, she show? played future Harper. A future Harper. Rachel okay. Dratch. Yeah, yeah. She played the future best. Harper. Um, it's important to, you know, you're talking about being depressed. There's a, you know, Talking about being depressed is important, sharing that. And I love the fact that you were able to feel better by acting. Well, it's and, outlets. And yeah, it's, it's doing it's, that. It's, right. it's, it's the importance of outlets. And, and it's, you know, and, and I think we've talked about this before about like taking things, keeping things from being taboo that should be normalized and things like that. But, right. But, and it's like, what's, I love what Selena's is doing with mental health and just being honest about it and getting it out in the open of like, hey, look, even if you, if you're in a position where you seem like you have everything, it doesn't make you immune to struggling with some of these things. Yeah. And, and and it's something that like so many people go through and we feel like we have to go through it alone in the dark. Yeah. It's, and it's, well, you, when you're you depressed, don't. you don't feel like there's anybody there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a very isolating um, and, thing. And I've been there and I, I have to say, I agree with you. It's so wonderful that Selena on her platform, on, yeah. her, on her, I mean, she has, she can reach so many people and the fact that she's talking about it yeah. means that there's probably so, a little so th- girl out there yeah, yeah, who might be unhappy or depressed. And because you and Selena are talking about this, yeah. will come out and talk about, uh, you know, but uh, it's, uh, how they're feeling. It's which is worth important. being honest about to me in all facets of like your experience of life and, and things like that. It's worth being honest about it. And talking about it, if you can make one person feel less alone in, in their experience, yeah. because some some of these things, whether it be a chronic illness, whether it be a, you know mental health, whether it be a circumstance that you're going through, the worst thing in the world is feeling like you're the only one. Well, and and then, so to give, so to alleviate that, right, and to know that you're not is is worth all of it. Now being older, I see. How many people go through yeah. very similar things to yeah. me? And there's the human there's a, condition is very repetitive. But, but but knowing someone else has been there, and like oh that yeah. happened to me too. Yeah. That camaraderie and we can talk about it now is really important. Mm-hmm. You know. All right, let's shall we move yeah, on let, to let's, another let's question? Go, speaking of happy and positive, <laughs> ooh. Dan Graff. 
Hey, Dan. And a lot of people ask this, oh, actually, because yeah? we talked about the original unaired pilot, which I've only seen, but I had to go to the 21st floor at the Disney Channel building oh, to and watch secret. it. They to, locked you they in. They locked me in the vault, <laughs> and I had to watch it in the Disney vault. Everybody's asking. So, but what happens? No, am I, am I going to no, get no, in trouble no, but that's if what I they're show asking. everybody? They're saying, are you allowed to show the unaired pilot? And the answer is, I don't know. Thanks so much for watching that clip of Wizards of Waverly Pod. If you want the full episode, head over to our Wizards of Waverly Pod YouTube channel at the link in the description. And if you just can't get enough and you want exclusive weekly bonus content, join our Patreon now. There's a link in the description for that too. Imagine that. Thanks for tuning in.